Pump problem or an operator problem? Let's find out. What's going on here, Tom? Uh, I can't get this frickin' pump started. Ah, we'll get it started. Let's square away this pump site first. Copy that. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the pump site squared away. The pump site is level. The pump's not vibrating. It's trying to slide into the creek. We got our hazmat issue uh, resolved with the containment berm and the uh, absorbent pad. Fuel can located properly away from the exhaust. Foot valves on a shovel. Keep dirt out of the pump head. Pump set up according to the instructions in the kit. Everything looks good to go. Let's get this thing running. All right. Well, before we start it up, something I find useful is I like to start at the foot valve, work my way towards the pull cord, and uh, just double check everything, make sure we're good to go. Okay. So our foot valve is submerged on a clean surface, looking good. Next, we want to check the draft hose coupling on the suction side of the pump head, make sure we're not going to suck any air and lose our prime. That's good and tight. Now we'll check the priming cap. Same deal there, lose your prime. That's nice and tight. Now we're just going to prime the pump head, make sure it's good to go. It's got, already got water to it when we go to start this thing. So you want to stroke this thing till water comes squirting out of the handle area. That should be good to go. As quick as possible, you want to uncouple this and couple the uh, your hose lay. Now this is a pressure fitting. You don't really have to. Doesn't have to be gorilla tight. Hand tight will work. So now I'm just going to verify that the fuel line, the fuel inlet block, is good and tight. Okay. Odds are the last thing this pump did was got turned off, so I'm going to make sure the ignition switch is up, on. I'm going to make sure the reset rod is in, and now I'm going to prime the carburetor. So I'm going to squeeze this primer bulb until I see the fuel in this hose just reach the bottom of the carburetor. And I'm good. So now that's primed. We know we got fuel. Is that fuel vent open? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Is that uh, fuel can lid tight? Yeah, that's tight. Okay, Tom, it's pretty cold. We should probably choke this thing. Okay, what's the choke do? Uh, choke just uh, increases the amount of fuel entering the engine to get enough liquid fuel to create enough vapor for ignition. And you normally do that when it's cold or hasn't been run in a long time? Yeah, cold starts only, pretty much. Okay. And what's next? Put it in the uh, warm-up start position? Yeah, now you just want to get a firm grasp on that thing and pull that cord. Okay, now that wanted to go. It did. We could have opened the choke at that point, but we can open it now Okay. and tug it another couple times. It should fire right up. Okay, so I'm disengaging the choke. Yep. We've heard the pop. Yep. for about two minutes, okay. and then you can go to full throttle. Ah. Hey Tom, we just lost the water show. What's going on? I don't know, dude. It just revved up super high, about blew my ears out. and. Here we are now. Okay, so we had an overspeeding situation. Right. Huh. Well, I know that the reset rod is designed to pop out when that occurs. Okay. Thus, killing the engine, so. 
Let's see if that reset rod's popped out. So why did that thing pop out? Well, the pump was over speeding. It's designed to push water under a load. When there's no load on the engine, it spins too fast. And the air vanes and the cooling fins pop the reset rod out. So what are you saying? I think we lost the prime somehow. Okay, so we need to check and see if everything's tight. You bet. So see our foot valve's still in the water. That's still tight. Oh, I think our priming cap rattled loose while you were napping. We're gonna just verify we still have our water in the pump head here. Yeah, it's not dribbling out like it should, so we're gonna go ahead and reprime the pump head. Hey, where are your earplugs, Tom? Uh, well, if I wear earplugs, so I get all dizzy and stuff. Well, it's PPE. The kid comes with like 12 pairs. Let's go ahead and put some in. All right, copy. Okay, Tom, I think we got that problem solved. Let's go ahead and try to start it again. All right, sounds good. What the hell, dude? Dude, you got that thing on choke? Yeah? No, dude, it was just running. It's warm already. We don't need to choke it now. So, but I think we flooded at this point, so we need to correct it. Okay, so we need in. to, there's some sort of deflooding procedure we need to go through? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. I'll take the spark plug out. As long as we got the spark plug out, we might as well check for spark. Make sure that's not a problem. I've reconnected it to the boot and the plug body is grounded to the pump head. Tom, you want to pull that starter cord a couple times and I'll observe the gap here for the spark? I'd love to. Oh yeah, we got good spark. Next we need to take the cylinder drain plug out. It's located on the bottom of the crankcase. Oh, there it is. That bad boy. Okay. It's kind of hard to get onto. That's a copper gasket, Tom. It seals the uh, bottom of the crankcase. You need to make sure you don't lose it when you're taking it out. And you need to make sure it goes back in. Okay, now that I got this out, what's next? Well, fuel line's disconnected. We've removed the fuel from the situation. Now we're yep. just gonna air out the cylinder. We need to put the choke and the throttle in full run-run position. Okay, so the choke's gonna be back. Throttle's gonna be all the way open. Roger. Okay, and I'll just pull on it, all yep. that extra fuel will come out of the bottom. You bet, the we're just we're just drying out the inside of the well, pump. How many times do I pull on this thing, man? Ah, 12, 15, just to be safe. You smell that fuel? Oh yeah. Okay, should be unflooded. Uh, let's put the spark plug back in and the cylinder drain plug back in. All right, that's tight, dude. Okay, let's What's hook, next? Let's hook that fuel line back up. Well, she's hooked up, Captain. Okay, Tom, let's leave it in the run-run position with the throttle and choke. Okay. And let's uh, give it a couple pulls, see what it does. Copy that. Okay, so now we've tried that. We know it's not flooded yep. anymore. Now we know we don't have enough fuel. Okay. So let's go ahead and move the throttle level to start warm up. Yep. And go ahead and give it a choke. Okay. And give it a couple pulls. Okay. Right there. Now we know we know we're good. Choke off. Give it another pull.
thing will just die after it's cooled down, like it's doing right now. Okay, so there's no more line in it. Oh, good yeah. Go. You can either pry, reprime the fuel system, and start it back up, or store it for the winter. It's just, you just it's imperative that it cools down before you turn it off. There you have it. Sweet. So remember, Mark III pumps are highly reliable if you understand how to use them. Am I gone yet? <laughs> keep going, keep going. Seriously? <laughs> no.